Gospel of Matthew, chapter 26, starting with verse 26. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission or forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the wine, of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Amen. When I started ministry, I started in a district of five churches. Five churches, some larger, some smaller. And when I start in a new setting, I always go to the membership lists and make it a priority to learn the names of my sheep. Because I believe a shepherd that doesn't know the sheep by name is not a shepherd. But I have to admit, learning people's name is not an easy endeavor. It's not easy because uh, you can have a difficult time putting face or faces to those names, especially if you don't see those people every Sabbath. Now, in a district of five churches where you have to rotate, you don't have that privilege to see your church every Sabbath, let alone if the person is missing right when you are there. How are you going then to know the name and put the name to that face? But I noticed something very interesting in the dynamic of those churches. From the first time we had communion together. Every time we had communion, almost every single member of the church was there, present, to be part of the communion service. So I was happy because I said, hey, on a Sabbath when we have communion, I can enhance my knowledge of names and faces because everybody is there. And sometimes you just look and see who's sitting next to whom and you see family groups and it creates a system that allows you to keep those names and faces in mind. So, it was a good process, and uh, by the time I left that district, I pretty much knew the name of everybody, by family, and uh, every single person had a special place in my heart. So then, after four years, I was uh, called to do education department for the conference, but for one year, because one of the churches in the area lost their pastor, they also asked me to take care, as sort of an interim, take care of that church until a new pastor was going to come from the seminary. So I was now pastoring this new church, and uh, my default mechanism was go, to go back to the books, see all those names, learn the names, and try to put faces to names. 
But I encountered something very difficult. In that particular church, which was a pretty good-sized church, there were many people having the same last name. <laughs> same last name. So it's like Smith, 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 two or three pages. <laughs> and it's like, okay, so how am I going to learn? And that's not the worst. Problem is you had quite a number of people that had the same first name and last name. So you had like John Smith, John Smith, John Smith, John Smith. And you know, <laughs> trying to learn names like that, it's not easy. So I'm waiting now for what? For communion. Hoping that when communion comes, I'll be able to see those people by families and, and it will help me because now I only had one year. I knew I was placed there for one year, so I was doing my best to learn everybody's name. And uh, I could visualize, I could imagine my beautiful church coming together for communion just like I'm used to from my previous district. And... Uh, the communion Sabbath comes, and my church gets together for Lord, the Lord's Supper, and uh, surprise, attendance is much lower than usual. And I'm like, what is going on here? Then it dawned on me. My first district of five churches was a district of Romanian churches. Most of Romanians in Transylvania, that's the northwestern part of Romania, come from an Eastern Orthodox background. So the majority religion in the area is Eastern Orthodox. In Eastern Orthodox theology, communion is a big day. Because when you are part of the communion service, you go to church, you bring your problems, so to speak, to the Lord, the Lord pushes the reset button, and you are free and you are good to go, you are forgiven. This other church I'm pastoring now for one year is a Hungarian church, and uh, in that area, the majority Hungarian church is not Eastern Orthodox, it is Calvinist Protestant. And the theology of that particular group of Christianity is very different. If you had this reset button theology in the Eastern Orthodox Church, not the same in uh, Calvinist Reformed Christian Church. Because in Calvinist theology, you fix your problems first, and once you have your problems fixed, then you come and partake of the emblems. In other words, if you have not fixed your problems, you better not come. You better stay home. I didn't know that up until that point. But it surprised me to know that in spite of the fact that all of those churches were Seventh-day Adventist church, Seventh-day Adventist churches, all of them, the mentality the deep-seated beliefs were so different. Because let's admit it, when we come to the Lord, that's not the end of a process. That is a beginning of a learning process. And uh, those from a Calvinist background, they knew something from the Bible. But in my opinion, they misunderstood it. Because in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 
1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 27, that's what Paul says. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup, whoever eats this bread or drink this cup of the Lord, he says, in an unworthy manner, uh-oh, in an unworthy manner, will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. So uh, they would say, hey, I don't want to be guilty. I'd rather stay away. Or if I go to church, I will sit in the last row. No offense to those that sit in the last row. <laughs> and once the sermon is over, I'm out. I'm out because I don't want to be guilty. See how you can go astray with reading the Bible, but interpreting it a little skewed. In an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord, verse 28, but let a man examine himself. And so, or in this manner, let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. Please notice the text does not say, let a man examine himself and so not eat. The text says, let a man examine or a woman examine himself and so eat. So the point of Paul is that you should examine yourself. You, you can't just come like casually with no introspection as if nothing happened, as if everything was good in your life. You search yourself. You examine yourself. And after you've done this self-examination, then you proceed and eat. But what they understood from it, if you do your self-examination and, and you find yourself uh, not so good, then you leave. You don't stay. Verse 29 says, verse 29, for he who eats and drinks an, in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment. Some versions have damnation to himself. Why? And there's an explanation as to why. Not discerning or not recognizing the Lord's body. That is the main issue. You do self-inspection, self-examination, and you recognize or you discern the Lord's body. Why do you have to discern or recognize the Lord's body? Look at what Jesus does. Matthew 29, 26, 26. Jesus takes bread, blesses the bread, and breaks it. Breaks it. This is a broken piece of bread. And he gives it to the disciples and says, take, eat, this is what? My body. This is your body? Isn't that a piece of bread? Yes, it is a piece of bread. Or if you want, it was a piece of bread until Jesus blessed it. Because the moment Jesus blessed that piece of bread, something happened, and, and now people will try to explain transubstantiation, consubstantiation. What is that? There's not any clear explanation in the text as to what exactly happened. But what Jesus says, yes, I take bread, a piece of bread, break it, bless it, and when he gives it out, that's not a piece of bread. As he says, this is my body. And Paul says, yeah, you are supposed to discern 
you are supposed to recognize the body of Jesus Christ. Otherwise, you came to church to eat and drink, and all you could eat was a little piece of bread, and all you could eat was a little cup of uh, unfermented wine. Is that enough? What a waste of energy, right? But if you recognize the body of Jesus Christ, then you are partaking in His body. Because He says, this is my body. And then, Jesus goes on, verse 27, He takes the cup and gives thanks again. And that's where the Eucharistia word appears, Eucharist. Some people use that word, Eucharist. When Jesus blesses the content of the cup, gives it to them, saying, drink from it, all of you, for this is my, what? Blood. And yeah, now uh, some theologians will try to explain what happened. Is this a physical transformation of the content of the cup? Is there chemistry involved? Is it just a spiritual aspect to it? The text doesn't go into those details. But what Jesus says when he gives it out, he says, this is my blood. And what makes the difference between a piece of bread before and after being blessed and a cup of wine before and after being thanked for is somehow, in some manner, very hard to explain, the presence of Jesus Christ himself. That's why Paul says, you are to recognize, you are to discern this special thing. When you partake of the bread and the wine, it's not bread, it's not wine, it is my body, says Jesus, and it is my blood. You're here after a few months of uh, encountering all kind of challenges in life. And uh, we are ready to partake of those emblems. The introspection, the self-search is still going on. The question is, are you ready to recognize, to discern the body, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Savior? And in that process, we are going now back to something that is part, integral part of communion, a foot washing ceremony. Yes, it's, it's a ritual. To some, it may seem very odd and uh, insignificant. But Jesus not only said you should do it, he even modeled it. Unfortunately, for a while we had to stop because of the pandemic. You may even ask, did we have to stop really? But the point is now, we are going back to that beautiful ritual of self-search, of introspection. And I would like us to please stand now and bring our hearts in prayer to the Lord.
so that the self-search that is happening will get us by His grace to the point where we are going to be able to discern, to recognize the body and the blood of Jesus Christ the Savior when we partake of the emblems. Lord, we are coming to you as a congregation, as your family. We come from different walks of life. We have different backgrounds. Some of us may have one understanding, some of us may have another understanding of, of what really takes place when the bread is blessed and when the wine is thanked for. But Lord, what I'm praying for now is that after we search ourselves, we will be able to recognize, to discern the body, the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. And this way will be partakers of his death, but also of his resurrection and life. May your spirit guide us in the process of search and may the food washing that is going to happen also be a blessed experience in Jesus' name through the Holy Spirit. Amen.